This video is second in a series of videos as a general introduction to the state of Idaho. It is aimed primarily for those who are considering a move here. In the first video, I explained the different regions and major cities and towns in Idaho. If you haven't watched that video, I suggest that you go back and give it a look and I'm gonna link that above. I never remember what side it's on. It's gonna be up there. So thank you for watching. I'm making a new video on life and real estate here in North Idaho each week. So if you have not already, take a moment to subscribe and turn the bell on for notifications. In this video, my focus is on the climate and weather in different parts of Idaho. In case you don't stick around to the end, I did make a helpful chart with web weather stats for different cities and all of the different regions of the state. So you can use the link in the description below to have that sent along to you. I'm always kind of interested in why the weather is the way that it is. In Idaho, the northern part of the state averages lower in elevation than the much larger central and southern portions of the state where numerous mountain ranges form barriers to the free flow of air from all directions. In North Idaho, the main barrier is the Bitterroot Mountains, which form much of the boundary between Idaho and Montana. Idaho has a wide range of climates from mountain ranges, canyons, high grassy valleys, arid plains, lowlands, etc. It is located about 300 miles from the Pacific Ocean and influenced by maritime air borne eastward. In the winter, the maritime influence is noticeable in the greater average cloudiness and more precipitation in higher average temperatures than mid-continent. This maritime influence is most noticeable in North Idaho, where the air arrives via the Columbia River Gorge with more moisture than at lower portions of the state. Eastern Idaho's climate is more similar to mid-continent than the west and north, a fact evident by the greater range between winter and summer temperatures. The highest annual average temperature is 55 degrees at Swan Falls. In fact, you can find the highest annual averages in the lower elevations of Bliss, Lewiston, and Boise. Obsidian, at an elevation of 6,780 feet, has the lowest average annual temperature of 35.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Riggins and Lewiston have no month in the year with a mean temperature below freezing. The lower the elevation, the less days of freezing per year. Severe weather in Idaho. Eastern Idaho experiences more thunderstorm activity than the rest of the state. This happens when moisture from the south, which is coming from the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean, is brought in at high levels. Flooding in Idaho occurs, occurs most often during the period of seasonal snowmelt in the spring, usually in April and May. Bonners Ferry in Kootenai River Valley and Roberts and Meenan upstream from Idaho Falls both experience floodwaters nearly every year. Windstorms are not uncommon in Idaho, but the state has no destructive storms such as hurricanes and extremely small incidences of tornadoes. Windstorms most often occur from October into July and during summer months. Strong winds come with those thunderstorms. Humidity in Idaho. During summer months, temperatures above 90 degrees are not uncommon. Humidity during maximum temperatures are usually below 25% and often down to 15% or lower. Before I dive into the different areas and review a variety of factors, factors for each area, I wanna share one more thing for the farmers out there. The growing season, which is the freeze-free period, varies greatly throughout the state. The area around Lewiston has the longest growing season of 200 days, followed by a large area in the Central Snake and Lower Boise that has 150 days. Upstream in Pocatello, Idaho Falls area, the growing season is around 125 days. So I include six categories per location. First, sunny days per year. Second, annual rainfall third number of rainy days per year, fourth average summer temperatures, fifth average winter temperatures, and sixth average inches of snowfall per year. These are the things that I thought would matter to somebody if they were looking to move to the state uh, to keep in mind, like how much rain, how much sun, how much snow. <laughs> this was actually a very interesting activity for me and it was fun to compare and contrast these data points across the state. If you are considering a move to Idaho, I highly recommend getting your hands on this document. Let's start with the northernmost region, region one, which encompasses, encompasses Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint, and Wallace. All numbers I'm sharing with you are averages. This region has 174 sunny days per year, 27 inches of rain per year, 122 days of precipitation per year. The average July high is 82 degrees. The average January low is 24 degrees and 42 inches of snowfall per year. Next, we'll move to the North Central Region 2, which encompasses Grangeville, Moscow, Lewiston, and Riggins area. This region has 169 sunny days per year, 22 inches of rain per year, 116 days of precipitation. Average July high is 82.7 degrees. Average January low is 25.8 degrees and 42.8 inches of snowfall per year. Next up is the Southwest Region 3, which encompasses Boise, McCall, and Mountain Home areas. This region has 206 sunny days per year, 13 inches of rain per year, 87 days of precipitation per year. 
The average July high is 91.6 degrees. The average January low is 23.7 degrees and 17 inches of snowfall per year. You can see that the further south you move in Idaho, the more sunny days you get and the less rain and snow. Region one, where I am up in North Idaho, has 122 days of precipitation per year, while region three only has 87. More important, North Idaho has 42 inches of snow per year, and region three only gets 17 and a half inches. On to South Central, region four, which encompasses Twin Falls, Hagerman, and Burley areas. This region has 210 sunny days per year, 10 inches of rain per year, 78.5 days of precipitation per year, on average, the July high is 89.3 degrees. On average, the January low is 20 degrees. And on average, it has 18 inches of snowfall per year. Next up is the Southeast Region 5, which encompasses Pocatello, Lava Hot Springs, and Montpelier areas. This region has 209 sunny days per year, 14.8 inches of rain per year, 103 days of precipitation per year. On average, the July high is 84 degrees. On average, the January low is 17 degrees and 70 inches of snowfall per year. The Eastern Region 6, which encompasses Idaho Falls, Rexburg, and Island Park areas. This region has 201 sunny days per year, 12 inches of rain per year, 93 days of precipitation per year. On average, the July high is 86 degrees. On average, the January low is 12 degrees. And on average, 38.9 inches of snowfall per year. Finally, last but not least, the Central Region 7, which encompasses Sun Valley, Stanley, and Salmon areas. This region has 205 sunny days per year, and this compares to the US average of 205 days, 13.7 inches of rain per year, 77.8 days of precipitation per year. Uh, the average July high is 81.8 degrees, and the average January low is 7.6 degrees, which seems very cold. And then on average, 100 inches of snowfall for, per year. So they're definitely getting the most snow in that area. I hope that this video has given you some insight as to what to expect climate wise across very, you know, the very different parts of the state. The climate is different all over. Let me know what questions you have using the comments below or send me a note via email or text. Also, I'm always happy to have a chat about life here in North Idaho, so don't be shy. And do not forget to use the link in the description to get my Idaho climate and weather flyer so that you can see all of these stats for yourself.